morning, everybody. I need to move this over a little bit. Uh, we are now uh, looking at uh, vital signs. Vital sign. What are vital signs? Click, click. Uh, vital signs are basically your temperature, your heart rate, your respiration, your blood pressure, and we're going to add in here uh, pupillary response also. Uh, they are important because it tells us how we are, um, how our body is functioning. Um, our, our hypothalamus is basically um, that, how do I want to say, um, kind of the control center that, set, that keeps us at homeostasis, correct? And when there's something wrong, that will, um, that will, uh, it throws it off. You, either your temperature goes off, your heart rate goes off. Um, most likely it's going to be your heart rate first um, and then or the blood pressure um, and then that feeds down so that way uh, we can tell that there's something going on with your body. Uh, first off is temperature and um, right now during the COVIDness, uh, temperature is a big indicator of whether or not you are sick or have signs of um, having having a virus. So uh, a lot of uh, people are taking temperatures. The normal temperature ranges are 98.6 in a normal adult, uh, but that ranges. Um, there, you know, you can be 96.8 to 100.4, um, depending on that person. I, children. Uh, tend to run a little bit hotter than um, than adults, um, so it it changes, and um, it changes because of the time of day. It changes because of possible possibly an allergic reaction. Uh, it changes because of illness, and it can change because of stress. Uh, it can change be because of the exposure to heat or the cold. Um, again, your skin is going to be a, a big indicator uh, of how that exposure to heat or to cold. Um, and uh, our skin is basically the, the covering uh, that tries to keep us at that homeostasis. Uh, there are different ways to take a temperature. You have different temperature sites. Of course, you're going to go with the old school uh, oral, um, the, the thermometer that you can stick underneath your tongue and it's this is kind of like the norm um, every it's easy it's uh, it's non-invasive and it's it's pretty accurate it's not 100% accurate um, but it's pretty accurate then you have the armpit or the axillary sorry bug uh, they want to know if you can go back a slide oh sorry sure we good here? Are we good? Okay. Okay, and um, in the United States, we are taking a Fahrenheit reading, um, but in the UK, you're probably going to see, or in Europe area, you're probably going to see a Celsius because they use the metric system out there. Okay. Um, so there are different readings. Um, so the the conversion is probably good, but um, I believe um, universally uh, the Celsius is going to be taken. Okay, we can move forward. Got it. Thank you. Okay, we're at the ax uh, the axillary or the armpit. Um, not as not as um, accurate as the oral, uh, the tympanic. Um, people were having, or children mainly, were having problems with um, pat sticking the oral thermometer in their mouth for, for the entire one minute period to get the good reading. Um, so they developed the uh, tympanic. And then um, that one, there's also one that goes uh, kind of across the body, so so you just read it up on the top, and um, it goes again by the skin. So it's not going to be as um, 
as accurate. And then we have the non-touch nowadays where um, where everybody can just give you, a, a, just shoot it about two inches away from, from your forehead, uh, shoot you right between the eyes, and it gives you um, a reading of your body temperature. Uh, then you're gonna have the gold standard, the one that is the most accurate, and that is gonna the anus um, and uh, or direct the rectum so that's going to be the, the most accurate um, but I have yet to, to to take a rectal temperature because I work in a high school and there's just just so many different things that um, that could be misconstrued or any, or things like that. So I'm going to stick go by the um, the oral or even those temp dots, um, which are somewhat accurate, uh, but they're quick, easy, and I can carry them in my kit. Um, I don't have the um, I don't have the the, um, the fear of uh, the mercury breaking inside my bag. Um, because we do, probably don't have a little carry case or whatever. So the temp dots are gonna be in my bag um, and they're disposable, they're one-time use. And um, right now they're really hard to get because I'm teaching a class and uh, everybody went to the temp dots or getting those, uh, those um, non uh, the non-touch thermometers. Uh, pulse rate is gonna be next and then I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute or actually you can see me in in the side screen um, but we're gonna take a we're gonna take a pulse in a second let me go through the different sites first uh, commonly used pulse sites of course we're gonna have the radio which is uh, a go-to for pretty much everybody it's um, you don't have to touch different parts of the body except for the wrist so it's kind of, it's safe and uh, then you have the brachial pulse, which is in the arm. And then you can see that on also on, uh, on our track guy there. Um, you have different, you have the uh, dorsal pulse. You have, um, I find it kind of, kind of fun to take a temporal pulse, which is right here in, in my, in my head. And it's kind of, it's kind of going right now because I've been talking and going through. Um, the gold standard for this one is going to be uh, 60, min uh, 60 seconds. I was going to say 60 minutes, uh, not an hour, but one full minute of, of a pulse is going to be the best. Okay, um, that will show you that your heart's going to go. It'll it'll go up because you get the first contact and then it'll it'll regulate because now your body is used to it. But if you guys can, uh, go ahead and put your cameras on or uh, take your own radio pulse. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go on the thumb side right here. Can you guys see that? This way. You're gonna go on your thumb side and right in between this bone right along the side, you're going to go ahead and you're going to find a slight tap. So you're just going to feel a very, very soft tap on the inside of your wrist. Okay. You're going to take it with two fingers. You're not going to take it with your thumb because if you look, the artery goes up your thumb and then you could be getting a false reading. Okay. So that is the artery side. And go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to take a 15 second pulse. And then in the chat, what you can do, um, you can do is just give your reading in the chat. Okay, so let me start a timer. Start a quick stopwatch. Ready, set, go. Okay, 
can't stop and go ahead and multiply that by four and then you will get a one uh, one minute reading okay again it's it's not as accurate but if accurate but if we are we are trying to get a quick pulse um, then we're gonna do that for at least 15 seconds uh, we can do a 30 second um, you can do it actually a six second pulse and then just add a zero um, which is not too accurate um, this is mainly for like when you're out working out and you want to you want to try to see what that uh, what your re what your readings are or, or if you're in that target heart rate zone for your workout you couldn't find yours um, if you can't find it on your wrist then the next spot is on your neck okay and you have what is called an anatomical V you have different anatomical spots all over your body and you're gonna find the artery that feeds your brain okay and again you're gonna use two fingers and going around going down that sternocleidomastoid, mastoid down in that area you're gonna find the carotid carotid artery okay you should be able to feel those light taps now the one thing that you do not want to do is you don't want to go through and press on both sides because if you press on both sides it's you're going to get some false neg false readings but also you're going to cause it to bound Okay, and you press super duper hard and you cut that carotid artery off, it's kind of like you're going to give yourself the sleeper hold. Okay, and you could pass out. So you don't want to do it with two, two, and you don't want it to press super, super hard, um, but you just want to take it with two and get that reading. Okay, now the heart rate is, gonna, is basically telling us that you are going to um, how, how your heart is beating okay uh, if you are going super duper fast uh, it is called tachycardia okay so it's 130 beats um, at when you're just taking a regular pulse rate that means your tachycardia that means it's going really really fast now if it's going slower than normal like in the lower 50s into the 40s then you're going, then it's called bradycardia, okay? This is what a normal pulse rate is. Okay, this is what it sounds like when they're using the stethoscope, okay? And it should be a regular beat, okay? If you have a bounding or or uh, any kind of dys dysrhythmia um, that is going to cause it to to change that pace. It might go thump 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 thump. Okay, or it might go thump 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 thump, which would be like bradycardia. Okay, again, taking that taking that pulse, you are going to test for you know the strength of that pulse how 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 much it's how much you're able to to read that so some of you guys said that you couldn't uh read your pulse rate on the carotid artery it's kind of hard to find sometimes the artery is hidden underneath um, the tendons or alongside that bone and it's just kind of hidden sometimes you got to go down a little bit but um if you're not able to find it then it would be absent and that when you're taking your vital signs um, you're going to grade everything okay uh so zero absent is zero um if it's getting thready or weak like kind of in that bradycardia um then it's going to be a one um if it's uh strong normal then it's going to be a two now if you go faster and it's bounding, kind of like the fat, the fast, the tachycardia that we were talking about, then it's going to be a three. And uh, this is what EMS is going to grade you on in terms of the pulse rates. 
okay? Um, you could have some bilateral presence, okay, on both sides of the body, which is the same rate and the same time. So if I take a uh, radial pulse here, should be about the same on this side too, okay? Uh, respiration. This is how we breathe. Right now I'm breathing a little bit fast because I'm talking. Um, but you're going you're gonna to gauge the way your chest goes up and goes down, okay? And it is basically that up and down rate that you're going to be counting. So it's, again, uh, the gold standard is going to be one minute. You're going to take it for one minute, okay? You should have about 12 to 20 breaths per minute. And um, it does vary with age and the size of the patient. It may also vary if you have any type of uh, medical issues. People that are asthmatic may have a slower, um, but, they, uh, but they also may have like different sounds within their respiration. And we'll show you that in a second, okay? Um, faster respiration is called hyperventilation, where slower is called hypoventilation. Uh, just like um, hypothermia is going to be uh, very hot or very cold. Oh, I can't remember. Um, but hypo, uh, hypo is a very small or very um, decreased respiration rate. Okay. Um, the rhythm should be regular. You should be breathing at a normal, so it shouldn't be um, choppy and it shouldn't be should have its own rhythm, just like your pulse rate, okay? And again, normal is not or okay? So there's different, different qualities of that. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit of um, the normal and also uh, how your respiration sounds in this short video. Yeah, so now I'm going to listen to the chest. If you could just take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth. Okay, normal breathing. Or normal breath sounds. sound is like what an asthmatic might, uh, what the person might hear is an asthmatic. Okay. Um, and the next one is going to be blood pressure. Uh, we have a normal of one, 120 over 80. The top number is going to be the systolic, and um, that is when the contraction of um, the contraction of the heart. Uh, the diastolic is going to be um, when the heart is at rest. Okay, so you have, of course, you have all the four um, chambers of the heart, and they're all the blood goes into you know the ventricle part, and then it shoots through and it goes out. Um, and I'm being, you know, very kind of rudimentary in terms of the way the heart goes. We can go into, you know, a whole lesson on that or a whole hour on just heart functions. Um, but we're going to keep this short and sweet. Um, so anyways, so on contraction, we're going to get the systolic pressure. And then on uh, rest, we're going to get the diastolic pressure. This is measured in millimeters. This thing is called the it's big mom, mom, I can never say that. Anybody, any of the other ATCs count me out here. Big mom, manometer. There you go. Thank you, Arby. <laughs> or was that Arby? Um, uh, that measures in, in mer mercury. And uh, basically what, what happens is you, you pump the cuff up. So that way uh, it 
basically cuts off this brachial artery to your hand. Now you have a, you're reading the pulse or you're listening to the pulse rate in the stethoscope during this time. Um, when it's pumped up, you pump it up to about 220-ish. Um, it feels like your arm is ready to fall off. Um, and then you slowly release this, oops, sorry. Then you slowly release this and if this will drop down, okay? There's a video at the end of the presentation that you can um, go through that will, the video will be on um, West Coast Sports Medicine YouTube site. So that way you can see all of these vitals um, as they're being taken. Uh, this will drop and then as your heart, as the blood rushes back into this um, artery right here, then what will happen is this will actually read it. So it'll like kind of bound up and it'll go bump, 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 bump. And then pretty soon you won't hear it because it's pretty, it's an even flow. Uh, so you're not going to hear it in, in the stethoscope. But uh, what, you're, what you're reading is that first, when the blood rushes in and um, hits that artery sound, you'll get that first thump, thump and then uh, again, down. The normal is going to be 120, but uh, different ranges all over the place. And the same with blood pressure. Sometimes, sometimes your age, sometimes uh, your activity, um, if you have any illnesses, um, other things. Uh, I've had um, run upstairs because I was late to an appointment, so my blood pressure was up. Um, we had to wait for about 15 minutes in order for it to regulate. Uh, the best time to take it is in the morning, and that's where you get an accurate reading. Um, actually, for all of your vital, vitals, vital signs, if you take them in the morning when you first wake up, that's going to be pretty much your normal. Okay? Uh, like I said, this is um, a slide on where we are going to be taking the pulse, uh, uh, taking the blood pressure, sorry. And like I said, you are occluding that, that um, artery. When you release the pressure, you're gonna listen for um, the, the blood to hit that, hit the sides, and it'll give you a pulse rate. You can also take them, um, there are feet. You can take them in your feet, which is it's kind of hard, um, just because it's, it's away from the body, it's away from the heart. Um, so this is going to be the the artery, the brachial artery or the arm um, is going to be the most uh, accurate. You could also take it in your on your wrist. Nowadays they have um, just those wrist, wrist attachments uh, where it's automatic. Okay, and the popliteal is on the thigh. Uh, again, the legs, uh, even though they do have that the femoral artery that runs all the way through and you can read that um, it's not going to be this is going to be the gold standard it's going to be that brachial or the most common I should say okay the last thing is uh, your eyes your eyes are going to tell us tell your body or tell us as as a examiner how your brain is kind of functioning. Your eyes tell us a lot, um, whether it, you're normal, um, whether something is going on, if, it's, if you're slower to react. Um, those nerves are, are, we can see everything through the eyes, okay? Uh, how you're gonna do that is you're gonna take a pen light. I didn't bring a pen light, but I'll use my phone here. I'm going to fix one spot, okay? I'm gonna look at one spot, say I'm gonna look at that top, uh, that top eyeball, okay? And I'm gonna concentrate on looking at one spot, I'm gonna cover the other eye, or I'm just not gonna look, but I'm gonna go from the side 
and I am going to shine that light right in the eyeball. Okay, and what you're going to get is a pupillary response. Okay, uh, one, and you're going to hold it for about five seconds. You don't want to hold it on there forever because then you're going to see spots. Um, but both sides should be reacting. Okay, if both sides don't react, or if it be, or if it doesn't constrict, um, then we know we have problems and we need to get you to the ER right away. Okay, uh, when you go into uh, shock, um, your eyes are going to tell us a lot. They may not react as quickly as um, they may, you know, dilate, you know, really big, or they might constrict really, you know, really really small. Um, but um, your eyes are going to tell us if there's something going wrong within uh, your nervous system. Okay. Um, short video of pupillary response. This is the pupillary response. I can give you a lot of information. I can tell you about the patient's neurological status as well as any potential um, drugs that are off. First, assess the diameter of the, of the pupil. Here, it's about six millimeters. Use the light, flashing it into the pupils and looking for it to constrict. Also note, when I flash into one eye, both eyes will constrict. That's assessment of pupillary reaction. And that's about it. Uh, those are the those are the things that we tend to look at um, when we're looking for having illness uh, that could lead to shock. Um, now, shock is a 911 call. Um, so if, if we have any of those, again, you're going to feel, you know, the temperature part is your body cold and clammy. Um, you're going to take a pulse. Is it, is it bounding? Is it uh, bradycardia? Is it tachycardia? Um, the blood pressure, if we have a blood pressure on, um, on site, I have a, a small blood pressure cuff um, for, you know, for averages within my kit. Um, so I carry that um, with me at all times. Um, so that way I can take a quick blood pressure if I really need to uh, on the sidelines. Um, it's kind of hard to hear on the sidelines with in, in the stethoscope with all the noise with the, all the external noise going around, uh, but uh, I can I can actually get a reading just by looking at um, the RV. What is that? Spigmometer. 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 The blood pressure cuff, um, and that's uh, that's about it. Does anybody, um, you can ask your questions in the chat.